I'm Joe Halco, Director of Community Relations for Northwestern Counseling and Support Services, and welcome to another episode of NCSS Here For You. Since 1958, Northwestern Counseling and Support Services has been providing access to high quality services which promote healthy living and emotional well being to the residents of Franklin and Grand Isle counties. Over the years, as the needs of the community have changed, so too have the programs and services that we make available to assist children adolescents, adults, families, and seniors. We take our role in the community seriously and strive to provide a continuum of the highest quality services to meet the needs of individuals who at any point seek assistance. This month's episode is titled Developmental Services Division Programs. The NCSS Develop Services, Developmental Services Division offers an array of programs and services to individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Over the years, the division has received a reputation for being forward thinking by including numerous innovative programs. To discuss Developmental Services Division programs today, I'm pleased to introduce this month's guests. Joining us remotely is Samantha Thomas, who is the Developmental Services Division Director and in studio, I have Casey Carpenter, who is a DS team leader, Karen Johnson Phoenix, an employment specialist slash job coach, and Elaine Jones, interactive community advocate. I'd like to welcome all of you to the show this month. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. So to get started, NCSS is driven by a mission and a set of values as an organization. Are there any developmental services specific values that you run to as well? Absolutely, Joe. Um, you know, we provide services within a larger system of care across the state, and we have a state system of care plan that right at the beginning, right on the first couple of pages, indicates those values. A couple of them are we uh, work to be person-centered. We offer voice and choice. Self-determination is another one of those values and community inclusion. And really what those mean is that when we're working with individuals, we ask them first, what do they want? What do they want for their lives? We respect the rights of those that we serve to have the freedom uh, to choose what's best for them and to learn from life experiences just like anyone else. And we work daily to live up to those values to ensure that we're providing the best supports and services that we can. And uh, can you share the range of services that are being provided by the Developmental Services Division? Absolutely. We, you know, you mentioned earlier innovation, and I think that's a really important um, highlight, not only about what we do in DS, but what we do at NCSS uh, as well. When we talk about DS, the bulk of the services that we provide fall under what we call home and community based services. A couple of um, uh, services that we provide under that umbrella are what we call service coordination. Sometimes we call it case management. Uh, and that's that's really there to make sure that those that we serve have quality, collaborative, and coordinated care. Um, there might be a lot of uh, providers involved in the lives of someone that we serve, or they might have a number of interests. And we wanna make sure that those folks have what they need to be able to um, live happy, healthy, fulfilled lives. And service coordination is an integral part of that. We also provide a tremendous amount of community supports, direct supports within our communities. I was just saying uh, this morning that if we actually wore our NCSS um, hats and shirts, folks would see us out in the community in all realms of our community, providing support, helping individuals to um, achieve their goals. Uh, sometimes in we're working on independent living skills. Um, there's just a tremendous amount of support that's happening out there in the community and in the homes of folks that we serve. Um, the folks that we serve can live in a number of different um, uh, models. Some folks live independently on their own. Some folks live with family members. 
Other folks live with individuals that we call shared living providers or home providers, and other folks live in some uh, residential programs. We run a few residential programs in our community, one of which is we call Berry Hill, and it's a great um, place where folks that need a break, that need some respite, um, they can come and stay. Some of our folks that we serve have some pretty high medical needs. And we have the equipment and the staff support uh, to be able to provide um, a nice break for folks to go and stay. Um, and the relationships that people build are really quite lovely. We have employment supports. I know that Karen will be able to talk about that for sure. Um, and we have our Academy of Learning. We have our program for adaptive and expressive arts, which is a lovely way to empower the folks that we have the, the pleasure to work with and to serve to engage their artistic pursuits, um, whether that's music, art. Um, one of the other parts of PEA is our communication programming. We want to, we work and strive to make sure that those that we serve have all of the opportunities to be able to communicate. Um, I talked about those values a little bit earlier. You know, we want folks to be able to have a voice and a choice. So we work really hard to create uh, services and supports that allow folks to have that voice. We also have some clinical supports, which looks like therapy supports. And then outside of our home and community-based services, we also provide programming to individuals who've experienced um, a traumatic brain injury. It's another function, um, an exciting way that we can, you know, provide um, quality supports in our community. You know, I have always said that, you know, NCSS is really uh, the fabric of the community. And Sam, a lot of mm. what you just went through, and you're right, if everyone wore shirts and hats and, and what have you, <laughs> and whatever they're doing on a daily basis, people would really begin to understand just how we are everywhere um, throughout the, the two county area. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, our staff and and what they do and how they're assisting. And I think, you know, the biggest thing you're all going to talk about today, but it's just the fact that everyone's different. Everybody's at a different place, but the goal is to help someone achieve as much as they can out of their life and to be mm -hmm. as independent as possible. Mm -hmm. And the reality is why not, you know, um, mm -hmm. for people who aren't dealing with intellectual or developmental disabilities a lot of times i know that they don't think about that too often but you know everybody who is in that situation deserves to live as full a life as they can possibly live mm -hmm. and with all of the services that all of you provide it certainly helps them to to achieve those goals absolutely so let's let's turn this for a moment if if someone was interested in working within the developmental services divisions, division, what are some of the jobs where uh, people can make a positive impact on people's lives? Um, uh, people can work in any place, really. We do have a job developer who does go to businesses um, around Franklin County and, and um, I think mostly in Franklin County. Mm -hmm. um, and she sets up jobs for people and then as job coaches, we go in with the people that are looking to work. And it's just great because they are able to fulfill a lifelong dream to be working, to be um, making money, you know, to be out of the house, to be involved more in the community, to make friends. Mm -hmm. um, so we have um, people in a lot of different businesses around town, um, grocery stores, um, you know, maybe TJ Maxx. Um, all kinds of different places. Um, really, I'm drawing a blank, of course, but anywhere is really. Employers in Franklin County are great. They've really given us the opportunity to um, bring people in and to show them, you know, how to how to work, and they have our support to do so. And I think one of the critically important aspects for all of the people that we serve is employment, because it's great for their self esteem. Yes. And I think one of the great things you've uh, mentioned there, Karen, is the fact of the relationship with the, um, the organization where they're working and how they're accepted. And has it 
not been, I shouldn't say it in that terms, but isn't it true that these employers find that the most loyal employer uh, employees that they have happen to be those that are working with the job coaches throughout the community? Yes, I can safely say that's, oops, that's probably true. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, some, sometimes I go into work and I hear, oh, so-and-so called in, or we have 14 people that called out today. And really, um, the people that I serve um, with job coaching do not call out sick very often. Um, they are always mm -hmm. there, willing to learn new tasks. They want to better themselves. And I'm not saying more so than people that are already, mm -hmm. you know, working that may be different from us, but there's definitely more of a, a strive to do so. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I think too, sorry, Joe, if I could just jump in real sure. quick. I think what we've learned as well throughout the pandemic is that um, the quality of the work that the folks that we serve and that Karen and her colleagues are supporting as job coaches, that they are having a tremendous impact in those places of employment, you know, during the pandemic, when businesses had to shut her down, when we were, you know, stay home, stay safe, folks had to stop working. Um, but when those businesses were back up and running, all of those employers called those employees back and said, we want you back. Your job is still here. Um, we value you. Uh, and I think that's just really important to note. Yeah, and, and that does lead us to some of the positive experiences from the perspective of the employer that we participate with through their lens, things that you have heard. I mean, I, I understand the fact of, you know, maybe our uh, individuals are always there where maybe some of the people who work there full time maybe may not be. But are there any other types of uh, experiences that could be shared that are really kind of uplifting from a standpoint of how an employer talks about someone from this program who is working in their, uh, in their one of their locations? Um, I think employers in general are excited to work with, um, with people with disabilities. Um, the people that we serve are often um, more enjoyable in the job place because they're often more happy. They really want to be there to work. They like to learn new, <clears throat> excuse me, like to learn new tasks. And um, I think that it's good for um, people that we serve to be able to have a relationship with a boss, you know, with management, with their supervisor, um, what have you. And it gives them more of a feeling of, I really am valued. Um, I am really important here. Um, employers um, in general are great. We have worked with employers to, you know, talk to their employee, not to us. You know, we're there to support if they need some accommodations, if they need a little extra help, but we're not their employee. Yeah. So, you know, learning to um, talk directly to people has been something we've wor really worked on with employers. And I think they appreciate that because sometimes I think they're a little nervous because we're there. You know, I think yeah. that's a little <laughs> offsetting to them. So, yeah, employers are great for sure. And if I could just jump in to add also, um, it's it's such an impressive relationship, the community partners that we have that employ our um, clients, people we serve. I'm always impressed at how willing they are to go above mm -hmm. and beyond and reach out. And like you were saying, Karen, to learn. And and uh, I know of several situations where those employment situations have developed into you know, what we would term a natural support. So they met somebody at work, whether it's an employer or a coworker, that they then establish a friendship and somebody else that they can go to and work with and lean on. And that's really beautiful to watch. Um, another thing um, about employers, we're not necessarily involved with job coaching forever. You know, we mm. might we might go in for two months, we might go in for six months, two weeks. Um, so employers have to take that leap to be able to say, okay, you know, this person can work on their own. And that happens more often you, than you might think. So, and, and we, that, are, we are able to stay with people long-term as well, ongoing. But that ability to have that happen, that transition is so mm -hmm. exciting to be mm -hmm. able to see someone grow like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, the other thing that you're, you're also mentioning in a sense is the other aspect of this, which is purely the socialization aspect that this is another opportunity for these individuals to socialize with others. 
outside of where they live, which I think is very important, mm -hmm. again, for their self-esteem and, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, moving forward. Yeah, so a lot of people don't have a lot of socialization or even a lot of communication with others at home. So when we walk into a workplace and everybody's like, you know, hello, you know, how are you? Yeah, it's nice. It is a very exciting um, role for myself to be a job coach, to see people just, you know, gaining all kinds mm -hmm. of different um, perspectives on life, really. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So earlier... Yes. Um, Sam had mentioned about uh, clinical supports. And uh, can you share more about that? Absolutely. Um, we have uh, therapists within our division who are trained to provide that level of support. And, you know, I think we all know that um, it's been incredibly challenging navig navigating this pandemic. And across our agency, we've seen folks um, with their mental health needs increasing and we have historically in our division uh, been leaders across the state in providing appropriate clinical supports. We have a couple of wonderful um, therapists that we um, are able to provide to those that we serve. And we also actively work with interns. So for a good portion of the year, we have an intern that's working with us and providing those supports, um, which can have a really tremendous impact. And when we're able to provide, you know, such a package of services, you know, I think about somebody who might be working with Karen um, at their employment and maybe getting some support from Elaine or, or one of her colleagues in the community. And then we've got a therapist involved and a service coordinator. That's a really lovely whole package of supports um, really in the corner of that person and um, helping them to be successful. So really, in a sense, uh, what, what's being stated, I believe, is a lot of these wraparound services to ensure success for, for individuals. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk a bit now about the important role that home providers play in the daily lives of individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Absolutely. Uh, so we've got a number of home providers across our two counties that open up their homes and they provide a safe and supportive environment and lovely relationships um, for people with disabilities to live. Uh, I'm sure that um, Karen and Elaine and um, Casey could speak to some of their interactions with our home providers, but they create just a wonderful home base, a secure place for folks to be able to um, to live and grow. And they collaborate with us tremendously. Um, we're oftentimes talking with our home providers about how things are going um, and working together. So they are a, an unseen, for sure, um, tremendous resource and support network in our communities. Yes, oftentimes the home providers are um, doing so many things that aren't recognized. So making sure that medical needs are met, coordinating doctor's visits, and making sure that folks are getting their medications properly. Um, they're coordinating with um, staffing like Elaine and Karen for scheduling. Um, and they're also giving us as providers a ton of information about the person that we're serving and what they need, um, you know, what best to support them so that then we can put those into place and it's such a great team effort to provide that support. So the home providers meet with the whole team and are kind of the, the main information sources for those folks. It's really wonderful service that they provide. Yeah. And I think what's important to note is this is a partnership because I think mm -hmm. once again, about possibly misunderstanding of some folks is that home providers are NCSS employees, which they're not. Mm. So. This is another layer of, of, of a partnership and other resources in the community of working mm -hmm. together for the betterment of the individual. Yeah, I would say most of the time the home providers, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, like the person that lives with them becomes a part of the family. Mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's such a beautiful, again, such a beautiful partnership to see. It is. Yeah, and they you know go to family gatherings and are part of the mm -hmm. holidays and... Um, all of that stuff. And so it's another community inclusion aspect. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's terrific. It is. Mm -hmm. Now, what's coming up next? Well, you know, we are always, like you, like we talked about earlier, we're always looking at what can we do next. Um, during the pandemic, we had to close our Academy of Learning for safety reasons. Um, and that's a, a resource and a program that people really enjoy. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for, for folks to come together, to build connections, to build friendships, to learn skills, um, have some fun together. And we're really excited that with the new year, um, we are looking to reopen uh, and uh, we're hoping to start with two days um, and we're taking the names of folks um, who are ready to get back in and down at AOL. Uh, and I think, you know, we're always thinking about how we can do better. Uh, what can we provide to enhance what we have to offer um, to improve people's lives and, and help them to live um, well, happy lives. That's that's terrific. And and, you know, I know that that whole uh, Academy of Learning model and the independent living and again, things that we have talked about today. But, um, you know, it certainly has a structure to it in an effort to try to assist people with, mm -hmm. again, gaining uh, as many skills as they, they possibly can uh, can handle. So absolutely. If I can just say one more thing, Joe, sure. I think that, um, you know, we have a kitchen down at the AOL and um, many folks really love getting into the kitchen um, and cooking. And there's a lot of laughter that you can hear um, when folks are in there preparing a meal, learning a new recipe. Uh, and those are just great moments um, to be able to share between the folks that are, you know, digging in with their aprons and, and making something great. Mm -hmm. So Sam, actually, so my home base is at AOL. It's where my team leader is. So today I went down there after I was working um, so at one of the job sites, I went there to change to get ready to come to the show. And I'm like, oh my Lord, blueberry muffins are just like <laughs> filling the air with the aroma. <laughs> so I you know, asked one of the people there, did you make blueberry muffins? And he's like, no, I made brownies. So somebody else had made blueberry muffins. <laughs> so always very good smelling mm. kitchen there for sure. Yeah. They did smell good. Oh, I was there earlier. Goodness. I walked in and I thought. It smells so oh. good. <laughs> What's cooking? Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Elaine, you spend a good amount of time down there as I well. Do. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's a fun place. And, and they're really is usually some sort of a smell spaghetti sauce is common mm. or brownies or cookies and i feel like when i walk in i'm practically at home it's just very mm. relaxing mm -hmm. and you know everyone loves it there mm. Mm -hmm. a lot of people play cards and games and get to visit with their friends mm -hmm. it's nice yeah, there again, we get back to the whole socialization and the importance of it. And, yes. You know, a, a nice place where they can go and spend some time to, to accomplish mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I think also, I know um, in my role, is, I've been a, I've done a lot of roles at <laughs> my short yes, tenure at SDSS all over the place. Um, so I, I've worked, I have not done job coaching. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been a direct staff like Elaine, and I've been a case manager, and I'm a team leader, and I've been on the crisis team. Um, and it's just, it's so nice to have everybody here to talk a little bit about, again, those wraparound services is just such a great way to talk about what DS offers. Um, and I just want to give Elaine an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the, her role. Um, I know, especially during the pandemic, when we were all at home and you know, it's it was for those with a lot of coping skills, it was a struggle. So yeah. having that um, interactive community support person to take somebody out in the community. And I, I just know um, that Elaine works with some folks who, you know, if Elaine's not available, we're not going. <laughs> and how important <laughs> she is to those families. Um, and if you want to just talk a little bit about what it is that you do with folks. I know you go to the AOL, but there's a ton involved in those um, community support people? Well, I, well, it starts out with I pick someone up at their home, wherever they are, could be with a home provider or their family or independently. And I take them out into the community. 
and we do whatever they feel like doing. Usually it's pretty routine. So, for example, one person might like to go to AOL to play cards and put puzzles together, have lunch. But I always try to integrate walking into the mix because I just feel like it's easy to get sluggish. And I know for myself, especially during the pandemic, it was easy to kind of sit around, eat a lot, and watch TV. Mm -hmm. But let's all get up and, and walk and we feel good. And then we can visit with our friends or maybe go for a little ride. Mm -hmm. um, we pretty much, I would say we just have fun. And we always have a good time. If there's anything they need to talk about from um, maybe something that's going on at home, they can mm -hmm. talk with me. I feel like anyone that works with their folks has developed a good, close relationship. Mm -hmm. And we're all very protective of the mm -hmm. folks we work with. So if they have something they need to talk about, we get through it and yeah. we get past it. Um, you know, because we all do have things that we need to talk about. We need a friend. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I come in. Mm -hmm. And any other staff that works with our folks in the community. Mm -hmm. So I love my job. <laughs> you know, Elaine, and that's so critical. Yeah. And uh, with something that Karen had mentioned earlier about, you know, a lot of times, the engagement that some of these individuals will get when they're out working will far exceed what they get when they're back home because mm -hmm. maybe at home there's like not much that may be happening. So right. interject yourself mm -hmm. into this model now and you become someone that they feel very comfortable and confident to be able to share things with. And it, like you say, everybody needs somebody to talk to during certain times mm -hmm. and how That's critical right. that role is mm -hmm. in you know, trying again to ensure that the individual um, maximizes their life. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's Lean terrific. On, yeah, something else I'm thinking about, Joe, as you're talking about that is we've, I feel like we've talked a lot today about relationship. And, you know, when folks um, come to our services, we develop together what's called an individual service agreement. And that's where people identify what are their goals? What do they want to be working on? And the relationship that Elaine builds with those that she serves and Karen builds with those that she serves and and, Car and Casey has in all the roles that she's had, <laughs> that basis, that strong relationship is really integral for folks to be able to maybe step out a little bit on a limb and try something new as they're working hard um, to achieve those goals. It's just paramount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Karen, did you yeah, want to say something? Um, I just wanted to say, um, to kind of go along with what Sam said, when sometimes when you do start working with somebody, and you girls can probably um, go along with this too, they might not trust anybody. Mm -hmm. They might not, you know, believe anybody's looking out for them or wants anything good to happen for them. So that's really important, I find, as a job coach, you know, are you really going to pick me up for work? Are you going to make sure that I get to work? Um, you know, are you going to remember? That's definitely something that I feel like um, we definitely gain trust throughout our relationship, which is really probably the, the biggest priority for some people. Mm -hmm. So, and that really makes a big difference in people's lives. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You will pick me up and you will take me home. Yes. And I can trust you. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because some clients just, I know I have one that as soon as he gets into the van, he starts asking what time he'll be going back home. <laughs> and it isn't because he doesn't like to go out into the community, but he's very attached to his home provider, which mm -hmm. is a good sign. It makes mm -hmm. me feel good. And we go over the whole schedule at least 10 times throughout the day. <laughs> and where I'll be dropping him off. But it's very important to him to know that if he goes with me, yes, I will return him back to his home provider. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it's a, a trust issue and it's important. 
And I know Elaine, <laughs> I can't sing your praises enough, both of you, but <laughs> I know Elaine says she has fun and loves her job and it's easy breezy, but it speaks to how good they are at their jobs because it is a lot of work. It is building trustful relationships with people is not always easy. Yeah. Um, and so I think sometimes you guys can, don't give yourself enough credit, but <laughs> that is a lot of work. And <laughs> It speaks to that, that they have those wonderful relationships. And we have a lot of wonderful staff um, that provide those services. And going back to that idea, I keep thinking about that, how you're saying, like, if we did have a badge or a hat or something, people would be really, really surprised yeah. with all of the places that we are. And I think that's, um, you know, probably you would agree with me, but I feel like that's our job, right, is to stand in the background and... Mm -hmm support these folks to really shine brightly and live their best lives and take risks. And so um, while it would be interesting to kind of like, oh, look at all those folks who are back there, it really, that's what we know we're doing it right when people don't know we're there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been uh, delightful uh, and very informative. And believe it or not, our time is up. <laughs> so. Uh, I want to thank my guests, Samantha Thomas, Casey Carpenter, Karen Johnson Phoenix, and Elaine Jones for being on the show today and sharing their insights on the programs and services offered by the Developmental Services Division at NCSS. I also want to thank you, the viewer, for spending time with us again this month. You can learn more about all of the NCSS programs and services by logging on to ncssinc.org. I'm Joe Halco, and I'll be back next month with another episode of NCSS here for you.